Lord. Please, you may have your seats. All right, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, just a couple of announcements before I start teaching. Um, I start teaching, and um, maybe next week, Sunday, is our annual Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Next week, Sunday, is our annual Thanksgiving. So remember what we do. We will come elegantly dressed into the house of the Lord in your native attire. Hallelujah. If you don't have a native attire, just wear your suit and tie. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, I wanted to come. I saw someone, Brother Nee, stand up. I, I love, it's as if you're almost practicing for, I, I love this. I, I love, this is how, you know, this is on native, exactly, we, you know. Did the camera get him very well? Exactly. With that kind of, so everybody's coming, you know, if you are ethic, you dress ethic. If you're a BBO, dress a BBO. If you are, where? Where else? If you are, what? If you're Hausa, dress Ahusa, whatever you are, make sure that you dress that way, whatever you are, you know, wherever you're from, dress that way. And more than that, come with a big heart to thank the Lord. Maybe one of the things you want to do before you come is to get a list of paper on your phone or something, write three to five things you're grateful for, and look back at what the Lord has done. So it's our, our thanks you. And don't come alone. Come with your family and friends. Let everybody come. Come with your family and friends. Hallelujah. It will be a break time of singing, shouting, celebrating, and just doing all of that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, spontaneous worship. I don't know if you watched the last spontaneous worship. It was really powerful. We've had a lot of feedback. You know, I was looking at the views yesterday. You know, over 30,000 views on YouTube. Spontaneous worship. Even more than what we had in previous weeks. This Friday, spontaneous worship. I know that some of you last time tried to come here. Please do not come. We are not prepared for a live audience because that takes logistics, packing, and all of those kind of things. Just watch online. And as you're watching online, share the link. Share with your friends. Spontaneous worship is this Friday, it's on all social media platform at 11 p.m. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. And the last thing is, um, yeah, the last thing will be um, spotlight. So if you're in the creative industry, you're an actor, you're an actress, um, you know, you're an actor, you're an actress, I don't know um, where, what you do. This Tuesday, we will be meeting with you. Just a time of prayer, a time of fellowship. Um, you're an influencer on Tuesday. We'll do that at um, 28th of November in the auditorium. So see you soon. Glory to God. All right, let's turn our Bibles quickly. And I want to continue our teaching on the voice on guidance, on guidance. First of all, I want to say to all of you online and all of you on site, if you did not watch the teaching on Wednesday, um, please go back and watch it. So let me say something to you quickly here. Um, I know that some of you did not come on Wednesday, and I want to explain the different kind of services. The way our church is structured, this may not be for all churches. Sundays are very inspirational, very challenging, teaching, blessing, and all of those things. But Wednesdays have a different feel. So, number one, on Wednesday, we make sure you pray for a longer time. It's one of the intentions. It's a longer time of prayer. But the second thing is that even the way we teach is a Bible study format. So on a Sunday, you will see me quote a lot of scriptures. On Wednesdays, I try not to quote. I try to open the Bible and go verse by verse. What that does is that when you come on the midweek, it really increases your Bible knowledge, your depth and conviction. On Sundays when you come, your faith is inspired. The Holy Ghost meets with you at the point of need. You're wiser and that's wonderful. But I believe that you need the combination of these two to make it really work out well for you. So I want to encourage, so I'm only saying so because some of the things I said here, I would maybe, you know, say it here, but if you go back, you'll see me teach it step by step on Wednesday. Will you turn your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 28? 1 Samuel chapter 28. 1 Samuel chapter 28 and verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 28 verse 6. 1 Samuel chapter 28 verse 6. The Bible says, and when Saul inquired of the Lord... The Lord answered him not, either by dreams, nor by the Urim. The Urim is something I hope I can teach in the midweek service. 
you know, the Urim is something I can, there, there's a Turim and the Urim, you know, there's a Turim and the Urim, you know, um, the, you, I've talked a little about the Turim and the Urim, but it's something I hope to teach you. So what's the Urim? If you, I've seen a picture of the garment of the priest of the Old Testament, they used to have an airport held close to their chest, and that's where they will keep the Turim and the Urim, and it's what like, you know, the best way to really explain it is like an habalist, a babalawo. You know, the babalawo will have something they used to find out. You say, what did he first say? I said, bah! So, they had that thing, the Turim and the Urim, which was a yes or no. So, if you go and seek the will of God, they will use the Turim and the Urim to tell you what the Lord was saying. Glory to God. So, the Bible says this, and the Lord answered him not by dreams. So, a dreams a method of divine guidance? Yes. But I want to say something about dreams right now. Dreams are the lowest form of revelation. Why are dreams the lowest form of revelation? The reason why is that all, most guidance cannot be made up. For example, you cannot make up the voice of God. You can lie that you heard something, but you cannot make it up. But you can make up a dream by yourself. How do I know that? The Bible says that a dream cometh by the multitude of business. That means that you can have a dream because of the things you were thinking about. And I remember when I was younger, you know, I watched a movie that was um, about um, aliens. Then I slept and I saw myself in the dream with aliens and I was rebuking them in Jesus' name, rebuking them. I, I, I thought it was kind of a supernatural dream. So I went to see my Christian leader at that time and he asked me, he said, did you watch any film about aliens? I said, I did. He said, it's what you watch that showed up in your dream eventually. So some of you, your dream is not that spiritual. It's just what you were thinking about that showed up in your dream. The person you thought is your enemy did not come in your dream. You were just thinking about it and the person showed up in your dream. It was just... The, and sometimes dreams can be spiritual. I've also had spiritual dreams. I've also had spiritual dreams. Um, and I want to give an example of a spiritual dream. A um, couple of months before my mom died, I had a dream. And I couldn't remember the dream. And this is very powerful. I couldn't remember the dream. But I woke up knowing that in that dream that I was informed my mother died. I didn't know how they told me. But because spiritual, spiritual things are so complex. Because but it came in a dream. So I woke up, I prayed about it. I remember that time I told my wife and I said, I had this dream. And my wife said, oh, let's get together and pray. And we prayed about it. Then a month after, I also had the same, a similar dream. And I woke up again and my mom, I, and I said, I said, babe. I had a dream again, and I said, I felt the, the dream, my mom died again. And if you know, and this is how you interpret things. You don't interpret things from what someone said of a book. The Bible says that, watch this now, I want to give you a blog, but this is how you interpret things. Look at what the Bible says, not what a book said. The Bible says when Joseph got to Pharaoh to interpret the dream that Pharaoh had, he told Pharaoh, he said, the two dreams are one, yes or no? He said, the two dreams are the same. He said, they are only repeated because it must happen in a short time. So, I knew that. I said, wow, for me to have the same dream twice, wow, that means it must happen in a short time. And someone says, didn't you pray? Of course. This is also something I would love to correct about spiritual guardians. Sometimes when God shows you something, he's showing you to prepare you not to cancel it. Because some things must happen. For example, the Bible says Joseph had a dream that there would be an onslaughter of kids around when Joseph was born. Why didn't he pray that he should stop? No, the guidance was for him to take Jesus and they should go to Egypt. It's not everything that God shows you that he wants to change. Sometimes he shows you because he wants to pray. He wants you to pray and change it. But sometimes he shows you because he wants to what? Prepare you. And when I had the dream, I remember I went to see my mom I spent the longest time I spent that as an adult because, you know, and she wanted, because I went at like 9 a.m., I left like 9 p.m. She was like, wow, you have no job today, right? Because, you know, but I couldn't tell her I dreamt that she died. So I spent a long time with her. I asked her questions about her faith. I asked she was born again. In the evening when I was going again, I said, mom, are you sure you are born again? Mom said, what is it with born again question today? I just said, I said, I said, okay, tell me how you know you are born again. I said, just walk me through how you made that decision, you know, and all of those kind of things. But the reason I was doing that was because in my heart, I'd seen, I was still praying, hoping to change. Long and short, one month after that, my mother died in a dream. 
One month after, she was not sick. I spoke to her uh, on Saturday and Sunday. She, we agreed to meet on Monday. I woke up on Monday morning. I got a text from my brother and said, Mom died in her sleep. Coincidentally, just the, the one month before that time when I had the dream, two weeks after my sister lives abroad, called me and said she had a dream that they told her to come home in emergency. She was already going to come home in a month's in, in month time from that. He said, but they had the dream that she should not wait till when she was meant to come. She should come with an emergency. In my mind, I was just pulling everything together that, oh, God is busy telling everybody to prepare. Glory to God. So, let's go back to this. And I, I want to read the scripture because this is what the experience, let's go back to the scripture, First Samuel chapter 28. This is what a lot of people claim. They say things like, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not with dreams, with Urim of the prophet. So people say things like, um, I mean, that prophet part I've explained in the previous teaching, go ahead and watch it at Harvest's TV. You know, because in the Old Testament, you could go and consult a prophet to tell you what to do. But in the New Testament, you are not allowed to do that. In the New, people do it today, but it's not right. That is an Old Testament practice. The reason why is that in the Old Testament, only the prophet had the spirit of God. But in the New Testament, you have the Spirit of God. I have the Spirit of God. That's what the Bible says in George chapter 2 verse 28. I will pour my Spirit upon what? All flesh. It says your sons and daughters will what? Prophesy. In the Old Testament, only the prophet used to prophesy. So in the New Testament, we don't, we, we don't go and consult prophet. Well, prophet can confirm what God has said to you. But I've taught that before. So you can go back and do that. So, But this scripture is the experience of a lot of people. A lot of people are always saying things like, you know, God is not speaking to me. I'm trying to find out the voice of God. So in this teaching today, I want to focus on what is it that God is not speaking or you're not hearing? Yeah, is it that God is not speaking or you're not ready? Have you ever had someone say, I will call you and you say, you didn't call. And the person said, no, I called. You say, but I didn't get your call. Because when it comes to communication, there's always someone that is sending out signal and someone that is receiving signal. Most of the time when signal is not received, we are quick to judge that we are the ones that did not hear the voice of God. So that God did not talk to us rather. Meanwhile, we didn't hear the voice of God. Is it possible for God to speak to you and you don't hear? It's possible. I said so earlier on in the book of 1st Samuel. The Bible says God called Samuel three times. And Samuel kept on running to Eli. God can be speaking to you and you will not even realize that it's God speaking to you. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Why is it important to hear the voice of the Lord? We become wiser in retrospect. If you had the choice to go back to school, if you had the choice to just go back and live back your last 15 years, do you know you will live in a wiser way? Unfortunately, life is one shot. We become wiser in retrospect. So the reason why spiritual guidance is important is this. If we become wiser in retrospect, we can only live one shot, then I will need guidance to make most of my one shot. In retrospect, there are some investments I will not make. Because at the level where I was, I thought it was very intelligent. Looking back, it was very dumb. In retrospect, some things I bothered about, I will never bother about it. But what Guardian does is to make sure that, that your one shot is very effective. That's, what, that, that's so powerful. That is so powerful. And you know, guidance is so powerful. You know, because look at it. There are some decisions you make that short term... They look perfect, but long term, they are very terrible. And the decision you make that short term looks not so great, long term looks so perfect. Look at the story of Offa and Ruth. Their mother in law tells them that your husbands are dead. I'm going back to my town. For some reason, I says, go, You guys go and marry again. For some reason, Offa that told Offer that told the mother-in-law, I will not leave you. Seemed to be the wiser one. It seemed to be the one that the head was correct. And she went. And I could imagine what our friends were saying about Ruth. Our friend would have said about Ruth. Oh, wow. Ruth is not intelligent. Ruth is this and this and this and this. And I'm saying so to you because sometimes when God leads you, it doesn't make sense initially, but it makes sense in the long run. When you look through the Bible right now, Ruth became grandparents for jesus 
Ruth became the genealogy in the lineage from which David and Jesus came from. Who remembers Ophir? Nobody. This is why leading is important. This is why leading is important. Because it can make perfect sense today and can be entirely rubbish tomorrow. You're a businessman, you look at the papers and it makes perfect sense today. I mean, I saw a man that bought something, that bought a property. Only for years later, they said the government land will pass through that property and that the land does not have documents, that the document was revoked. How will you know that kind of thing? Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Joshua chapter 9 is full of a very powerful story about, you know, some people that pretended to be friends of Israel. Meanwhile, they were their enemies. How do you make decisions where the heart of men is designed without guidance? How do you make decisions where the heart of men... And let me tell you the truth. Can I be honest with you? Some people you call friends do not love you. They are only around you for what they can get. In fact, the, the reason why they chose to become your friend is to manage you. And some people you think are your enemies because they have a way of telling you the truth. Maybe they are blunt, they don't know how to talk. Are the people that deeply love you. And if you are not careful, you will not be able to see your discernment. And you will now make your enemies your friend and make your friends your enemies. Glory to God. And that's why discernment is important. Some of you are here. There are certain relatives of yours who thought that they were mean and they were wicked to you. Looking back over the past 10 years, they were the biggest blessing of God in your life. And it's discernment. It's discernment. So Joshua had these people sneak up to them. They pretended like friends, all for them to become, they were their enemies that pretended like friends, but they had made some covenants with them and they could not retrieve it again. This is why discernment is important. Discernment helps you make decisions beyond what meets the eye and that's where I'm going to. Discernment helps you make decisions. You make wiser decisions. You make decisions that are more effective. You make decisions that is more hallelujah hallelujah okay i say hallelujah all right let's get into it exodus chapter 14 Hmm. ezekiel chapter 14 not exodus verse 2 ezekiel chapter 14 verse 2 so someone says i've been praying so someone is here I've been praying a lot about my business. I've been, and when you need songs, you say something. I've been praying a lot about my business. Things are not working so well. I'm looking for divine guidance on what to do. Okay, I understand that. I've been praying about marriage. I just want what to do. I understand that. I've been praying about this issue in my company. What does God to? I understand that. Ezekiel chapter 12, not verse chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 12, chapter 14, verse 2, rather. You're correct. You're correct. You're correct. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 2. The Bible says this. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, uh, go ahead. Son of man, these men have set up idols in their heart and put stumbling blocks of iniquity before them. Should, should I be inquired at all by them? You know what I'm saying? Why can't these people hear God? The Bible says before they came to hear God, they put idols in their hearts. Why don't people hear God? So God is saying that, why are you coming? So, two categories here. These two reasons why people don't hear God from here. Number one, people don't hear God because there's a, there's a fixed mindset. So, you come to God, you know, you come to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. But there's a fixed mindset. See what the Bible says. It says, son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts and have put the stumbling blocks of their iniquity before them. Should I be inquired at all by them? You come to the Lord fully persuaded of what you want to do. And you now say, Lord, speak. You know the thing there? Eh? What you must, everybody look at me. What you must realize is this, that God listens to your heart, not your mouth. Because that's where we miss it. You come and say, Father, if it's your will for me to migrate, Lord, show me. Meanwhile, in your heart, you have migrated already. You now say, but I've been praying and God has said nothing. God says, you have set up an idol in your heart. What are you praying about? 
The way you know you set up an idol is this in your heart. Should I tell you, you know? Before you pray, you know your answer. How do you know? Before you pray, you know your answer. Before you pray, you know what you want to do. And God is wondering that if you know what you want to do, why why are you praying? So, maybe it's a marital choice you want, it's an investment you want to make. They've told you how from this investment you're going to make the first 200 millionaire. Just the first 200 millionaire. It's your wife now saying, Let's go and pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you say, Father, as she's praying, you say, Lord, just supply all I need because this thing, if you make it, in fact, you've projected what you would do. You said, Let's have a praying. And you say, I, I, say, I, I just feel peace. Oh. I feel peace. <laughs> you didn't feel peace, you felt profit. Praise God. I said, Praise God. I said, Praise God. The Bible says they've set up idols within their heart. So, a lot of people, the reason why they don't hear God is this two things. Number one, their mind is entirely made up, on, is entirely made up. If you want God to speak to you, you must go to God with an open heart and say, Lord, I have my thoughts and ideas, but I'm open. Speak into this, Lord. Lord, speak into this, Lord. As you are praying, you are saying, Father, I want to date this guy. You know, you see, you see, you even tell him, yes, you know, yes. And you, you say, Lord, but he's a good person. You, you are now convincing the Lord. You say, Father, this deal, if I make 200 million, the first thing I will do, I will give tithe. You say, I'm not even a tither before, but this one, I will give tithe. And God is saying that, are you trying to convince me with your giving? See what the Bible says. It says they have set up idols in their heart. The question is this. Every time, and this is how you deal with the idols in your heart. Every time you go before God, you must remove the idol. I was asking someone that was asking me about, she was confused about marriage, if this person or not. And I told her, I said, you want to know? He said, I've been praying, God has not spoken to me. I said, I'll tell you how God will speak to you. Don't talk to him or pick his cause or hang out with him for three months. I said, leave him alone and go and pray. He said, Pastor, that would be hard. I said, you have chosen. I said, you have chosen. Ah. She be the one that wants to hear the voice of God. The reason why is that there is a way that proximity will influence your hearing. It's after you have gotten your PR, Canadian PR, you will not ask God, should I go? Oh, God is the wicked God that says you should not go. You have gotten the peer and I say, Father, is it your will? Ah, it must be his will. Because if it's not his will, your mother will convince you. Are you okay? Your husband will tell you, are you okay? Then who we'll opened the door? They will forget that sometimes Satan opened doors to distract you from the bigger door. Glory to God. So one of the reasons why people don't hear the voice of God is this. Because their mind is made up. That's one. The second thing is that also there's emotional entanglement. That's the other one. There's emotional entanglement. They are just entangled emotionally. Did you notice that God never spoke to Abraham about Lot? Until they had the fight. God never spoke to Abraham. The reason why is that it was an emotional thing. Lot had lived with Abraham since when he was young. Some of you here, the reason why you can't hear the voice of God is that you are emotionally entangled. They've told you that it's a family business. So you must work here. And you must understand this. Everybody pay attention. The p- some people advise you and put emotional pressure on you. And in all fairness, it's not because they want the wrong thing for you. It's because in themselves, they are what? Short-sighted of the will of God about your future. So they keep advising you, thinking that advice is the best for you. But you know within yourself that this is not the way God has led me. Can I, be, can I tell you the truth? When you have relatives that say you must work in this company, you must marry this person, the reason why they say so, most of the time, is not because of evil. It's because from their own experience, because this is a challenge of success, people always think you will succeed like they succeeded. And they forget that the path of everyone is different. 
So you will hear, you cannot marry, you must marry this one. You cannot marry, you can marry this one. No, no, no. You must go and do masters abroad. You must do masters abroad. You must go and, they, they will put pressure on you. But the reason why it's from a good place, I must understand, not all advice from a good place is right for you. And most of you come under emotional pressure, not because you know the advice is right, but because the person is right in your life, you think the advice was right. A right person and loving person can give you bad advice. Praise God. Your wife or your husband will just call you and call you and advise you. And that advice is not as if the person is wicked or demonic. Let me give an example. Jesus, Peter looked at Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, I'm going to die at the cross. Peter said, Peter called him aside and said, Sir, don't say that kind of thing again. Ah, how do you go and die? Someone as good as you, the man of God. Jesus Christ said, Thank you, Peter. What a good advice. He looked beyond the advice and saw the advice was not from Peter. Peter had come under external pressure. So he said to Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. He was not talking to Peter. He was talking to where the pressure came from. Sometimes when Satan wants to confuse you and they cannot get to you, it will get into people close to you and mount pressure on them to speak. Because those words come from a place of life, you come under pressure. And if you're not careful, you slip and fall. And when you make the mistake, you know, they will say, I'm sorry, that was what I thought was the best for you. And that's why you do something knowing it is the will of God for your life. Are you here? Are you here? So the second reason, the second reason, the second reason why people get into trouble, why don't you hear the voice? The first reason why people don't hear the voice of God is because of what? Because of the made-up mindset. The second reason is emotional entanglement. That in the Bible, when Paul started his missionary trip, Acts chapter 13, Paul and Barnabas, they took one guy. Who knows the name? The name is John Mark. Is the one that wrote the, um, the, 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 uh, one of the synoptic gospels. The Bible says that along the journey, John Mark went back. So when they were going to go to the second missionary trip to visit the churches they had started, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says Barnabas wanted to take John Mark with him, but Paul said no. He said, why do you want to take John Mark? This was someone that when things got tough, went back. Don't take him with him. Don't take him with him. Okay, good. But that became a big fight. It became such a big fight that Paul and Barnabas were separated. Fact, I want to show you Acts chapter 13. I want to show you something very powerful. Someone say hallelujah. Verse 2. A lot of us are good in English, so you will see what I want to say. You've not seen it before, I want to show you. Let's read one to go. Let's read one to go. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Let's read one to go as a minister. Hold on now. Let's read together. One to go. Oh, it's not showing on the screen. Okay, can you look into your Bibles? I'm sorry. I was wondering why you were not reading. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Please, can it appear on the screen if it's possible? Acts chapter 13, verse 2. The Bible says this. As they ministered unto the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, what? Separate me what? Question. When you use, when it says separate me Barnabas and Paul, who was called? Who is the addition? He said the call was Barnabas. Add Paul to it. Do you notice? notice? You don't say water and Gary. You say Gary and water. Because water, Gary is a substance. So the one that had the heavier mantle was Barnabas. Paul was the addition. Who eventually did ministry? Paul. Why? Barnabas got, John Mark was Barnabas' cousin. Barnabas got so emotionally involved in John Mark, he forgot that they called, say, separate me, Barnabas and Paul. There was no John Mark inside. So, when there was this issue between him and Paul, he had just said, okay, it's okay. The voice of God says, separate me with Barnabas and Paul. Paul, let's go. But as soon as he chose John Mark, he lost destiny. Be careful who you choose as John Mark. I, 
maybe if that if Barnabas stayed, all the epistles were remember. I want to say something. Barnabas is not backslide, though. Church history said Barnabas went to plant churches in India. But I'm saying that when it came to the quality of work that was done, and this is the challenging thing. Oh my God, will you receive this? This is the challenging thing of being out of the will of God. When Satan wants to really destroy somebody and keep you out of... Oh wow, let me come now. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. When you are out of the will of God and you see trouble, be very happy. Satan is not your case. You know why? Because the trouble will make you go back to the will of God. How do I know? Look at Jonah. The trouble made him go back to the will of God. But when you are out of the will of God and things are going well, be very afraid. Because there will be no point of return again. So you enter that relationship, it's so cozy and nice. Be very afraid. Because Satan has made it more cozy. So that what is not the will of God will become a safe net for your soul and keep you for destruction. So you're just doing it. You know, I, I, I know I should not be walking here, but since I, walked, I got here, the boss, the boss is very kind to me. Madam is very kind to me. Everybody, this just feels perfect. Even though I know it's not the will of God, be careful. Look at Barnabas. He went to work in India, and I'm sure that he was like, well, I'm still doing the work in India. Looking back after many years, nobody has any written document of Barnabas working in the scriptures. All we are reading is that Paul said, Paul said. But Paul was meant to be the addition, not the main person. And that's why I keep telling you, what is the will of God may not look right or may be painful presently, but carries eternal consequences. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. So the question you want to ask yourself is that what John Mark do you have in your life? It's a big question. What John Mark do you have in your life? Some of you, some of you, as soon as your mother puts pressure, you don't know what to do again. I'm telling you, as soon as your mother put pressure, you don't know what to do again. No matter what God is saying to you, once there's family pressure, it will take out of the will of God. Once your husband puts his mouth, it will take out of the will of God. Once your wife puts his mouth, it will take out of the will of God. And the thing is that if you're out of the will of God, sometimes it doesn't show. Because Satan makes you comfortable after the will of God. And some of you, the danger is that you are now comfortable out of that which is the will of God. And so, you don't feel the need to pursue the will of God. Be careful of comfort out of the will of God. It's a danger zone because you then don't feel the need to pursue what the will of God is. That's why that relationship, at least, you know, it doesn't stop me from praying. It doesn't stop me from coming to church. You are okay with it. You are, it's out of the will of God. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Uh, emotional entanglement is very powerful. Though. Emotional entanglement is a state where you have an emotional stake. Your emotional stake, you just have an emotional stake in it. The last reason why people don't hear the, the voice of God is this because of busyness. Because of what? Busyness. Uh, wow, there's so many things I want to read to you here. Isaiah chapter 56 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 56 verse 3. Let's go quickly. Isaiah chapter 56 verse 3. Will you jump quickly? Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. So why don't we hear the voice, the vo why don't we notice the leading of God busyness? Revelation 3 verse 20. It says, what what it says? Is it on the screen? Not yet. Okay. It says, behold, I stand at the door and do what? And knock. And if any man will hear my voice, question. He says, I'm going to stand at the door and I'm going to knock. 
if any man will hear my voice and open, I will come into him. The question is this, why does he not come in? He does not come in because you have to open the door. Why are you not opening the door? When he knocks, you are distracted. Let me give you a practical example. You've read the story of, uh, you've read the story of uh, Moses when he, when he saw the burning bush. But most of you missed something in that story. And I don't want to go into it today. The Bible says, and Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great side. What am I saying? If Moses did not turn aside, he would never have had an encounter. You must turn aside. That means that he could have been seeing that burning bush for one year. But until he turned aside, he could have an encounter. Until he turned aside. And that's what I'm saying. The reason why some people hear the voice of God, there's so much going on. There's so much going on. That's why most of you hear the voice of God when things are going bad. You know why? Because success is loud. Success is loud and distracting. Have you noticed when your business is going bad, you, the tendency for you to pray is not even there. When, when your business is going well, when your business is going well, heaven is going, you don't pray. What do you want to pray about? First quarter, you made 100 million. Second quarter, you made 300. Fourth quarter, you did 500. What's that to pray about? But when there's one government policy that takes out your entire organization, you say, Father, oh, oh. the reason why is this, let me, the reason why is this, it says, I will stand at the door and knock. It says, I will be standing. When there's too much going on in your life, you will not hear me when I knock. You will not hear me when I knock. When there's what too much going on in your life. You know, and that's why all of you that are watching from watching abroad, you must be careful. There's a business people have in Canada and UK that makes them forget God. And that business is programmed into the system so that you don't even have time to hear him knocking. So it's when you go to the hospital and the doctor says, Wow, I think it's a cancer. You will now remember the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's why I said to you, success is loud. Some of you here, the only reason, can I be honest with you? Some of you here, the only reason why you can't hear the voice of God that you're successful and your success is so loud and so distracting, you cannot pay attention to the things of the Spirit again the way you used to do. I see it's not you that used to come for midweek service, you used to come for, you used to fasten and pray every Tuesday, every Wednesday, fast and pray, join NLP. But when what you are praying about have become a testimony, why should I pray again? And God says, this is what I will do. I will stand at the door and knock. He said, let him come in. He says, I will knock. You must open. Until he gets your attention, he cannot go inside. And many of you need to know that. You need to know that. As that relationship, you were in a relationship, as soon as they're dating, you stop coming to church. Because every weekend, you now go and stay in his house. When something now goes wrong, you now come back. What happened? I, I was just in a place. I was just, I was just in. A... You were not in a place. You were enjoying. You were enjoying yourself. Some of you that businessmen here is your wife. I will say, let's go. Let's go to church. Let's, go. you know, if your wife, your, let's go to church. You, what's the you're going to church? Everything is going so well. Ah, but the day they just call you and say, sir, are you, you are over forty. That pain problem you have is similar to prostrate. Prostrate cancer you will start waking up your wife let's go to church the reason why is that when things are going so well when they are going so well the tendency to forget god is what fire let's read and i will close revelation chapter 3 verse 20 are you here so if you're not hearing the voice of god ask yourself have i become so busy well is my success so distracting that i can and let me tell you something you must learn how to abase yourself. One day, I, one day I got up. This was a while ago. I got up. There's a place when I was in the University of Lagos I used to pray. It was called chapel. I must have spent thousands of hours praying in that chapel. Not at thousands. I just said, I just want to go here again. I just want to feel what I used to feel. You know, as a young child, you just come from school. Bah! You go to chapel. Just pray. I prayed in two places a lot. It was chapel and Marede Top. Those two places, if you went to the University of Lagos, you would know where they are. 
that man really talked, will spend 10 hours every day praying in tongues. But when things are going so well, there's no obvious need for prayer. And that's a trap. When things are going to work, there's no obvious need for getting up. That's the trap. Don't wait. See, I say you will pray. I say pray that you don't pray. Because you will pray. But it's what will make you pray that is different. See what the Bible says. It said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears, so why don't they hear? Their success is too loud. Your success can make you hear or your pain can make you not hear. But your success can block your ear. Your pain can also block your ear. Your ear. He says, and whatever your pain can block your ear. So because you have gone through challenge, you just close the door, the, the door to the voice of God. If any man will hear my voice, I will come into him. I will sob. He said, the first thing that you must hear. So how am I going to hear God? By paying attention. Like Moses, he says, I will turn aside and see. Can I give you the example? This is a practical way. How are you going to do it? Look at me, everybody. I want to give you close this. This is a practical way. If it's spiritual, you will see the invitation for encounters. How will it happen to you? <laughs> Wake up in the morning and you feel like eating. And you're like, maybe I should fast today. It's not just fast today. That was an invitation for an encounter. You came to a service like this and you were stared. This is what you do. Even if you're married, tell your wife, something is happening to me. Don't talk a lot to me. I want to go home and go and pray. Once you go home and pray, your wife can be talking, you open the door, you kneel down. Because it's an invitation for an encounter. He says, I will knock. That's what I'm saying. There's always a knock. He's always knocking. He's always knocking. You're in the office in a transaction and you just finish staring to pray. That's an invitation for an encounter. The point is that once you don't respond to the knock, it will, the door will not open. If you want an encounter, you open the door. Someone just said that, oh, said, honey, I don't know why I feel this way old. concerning this thing. Let's fast for seven days. That feeling is an invitation. I'm just showing you. It says, if any man hears my voice, he said, I will knock. If any man hears, I'm open. But that's what I'm saying. The way you are going to hear the voice of God is to open. How you open the door is by responding to the encounter, to that invitation. Some years ago, about three years ago, some things were going on. I said, ah, this is very great. I said, let me fast. I fasted for 21 days. After 21 days, I still felt the need to fast again. The fast ended 40 days. Because I saw the invitation. So the reason why you're not hearing God, just like Moses. Moses says, I would turn aside and see this great sight. If he didn't turn aside, see, as soon as he saw it, why didn't God speak? God says, come closer. There's always an invitation from the spiritual. Ah, yeah. There's always an invitation from the realm of the superlunar calling you deeper. Come. It's an invitation. Will you respond? That's the word. Will you what? Respond. I think this Friday, this Friday is our fasting and prayer, right? This Friday, I think the first, we always fast first two or three days. Will you respond? There's always an invitation for an encounter. Let's pray. Are you ready to pray? Okay, let's pray. How many of you understand? How many of you have felt this and I've said to you? You've, it, you've, it has happened to you before. Wave your hands if it happened to you before. Thank you. Okay, let's pray. Stand on your feet, please. Let's pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray anywhere you are. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. The prayer is that, Lord, help me to respond to the invitations. Help me to be able to pay attention. Help me not to be emotionally entangled. Help me to be able to pay attention. Let's go ahead and pray, everybody. Let's go ahead and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, I'm asking you that once again you will knock and grant us the discipline to be able to open the door. 
that will not be distracted by the business of life, by marriage, by children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord.